Welcome. We're all here, including James, I see there. I assume you can all hear me well. You guys are amazing. Really, thank you. It means a lot to us. I'm not going to talk for too long about what's going on. Oh, geez. You know, one day I'm going to remember to turn this thing off. Um, of course, the show tomorrow night is probably going to get me in a lot of hot water. Maybe not. <laughs> I don't know. But uh, um, I really wanted to share something with you that's been eating at me. Um, and just to give you something to think about, sort of in relationship to it, one of the things that came to me or was told to me, depending on how you want to look at it, um, and, and I don't know always, I will always state, I don't know if it's true or not, but it's my gut and it's what somebody said to me that isn't from here, <laughs> that the implant in my ear is made of their tissue. Yeah. So um, I get into that a bit more tomorrow night in the show, but I actually didn't talk about that in detail um, because this came through this morning, that that what's implanted in me is their tissue. It's, it's something that connects us. So, But I want to get um, James on because uh, he's only got an hour tonight. And I would bet after seeing his show and what he had to say that you'll have a lot of questions you want to ask him. So let's bring him on. Hello, James. Hey, welcome, how are you? Welcome back. Thank so, you so much. Yeah, well, thank you. I know you're a busy guy with uh, two small children. One's two and how old's the other one? Uh, almost nine months now. Oh, boy. You are busy. And you're still finding time to surf. Yeah, that's definitely the most important priority in my life right now. Trying to just get out in the water and, and appreciate uh, why we live here in, in Santa Barbara. Well, sure. And it, it's it's really not a hobby. I, I can't call it that. It's 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 a lifestyle and it's it's a passion. And with all this other stuff going on in the world and your own personal experiences and everything else like that, it's, it's a, it's a freaking oasis. It is for me with my interests and my passions and flying and, 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 you know, it's, it's all the same. So, but we appreciate you uh, taking the time to be here. Um, this is really your show. You get a chance to talk and, and, and share what's been going on. Um, you, you went into a lot of detail uh, in your film show, but is, is has there been more recent events that you could share or uh, insights into your experience? Because as time goes by, you get more. I mean, I did this morning. I, I got told point blank about something and it you, you wonder, is it just your mind saying that to you or are you really getting messages or communication it's it's hard to tell except that if you trust your your heart and your gut you know it's not you right yeah um i was just talking about that uh the other day about um et communications and really how um how it's it's uh at first when you first see a ufo you're not really thinking about that aspect, at least in my particular case. I, I never really realized just how open the channel could be. Um, I definitely think that whatever I met on the freeway has sort of become some sort of like, kind of like a spiritual teacher. And so I feel like there's a lot of of just like spiritual lessons that are sort of kind of interrelated into the phenomenon itself, that there just needs to be like a lot of like personal work that has to happen. Um, I guess for me that the biggest uh, relevation, um, uh, new messages that I've been sort of getting is uh, actually going back to the all is one message that I got on the freeway. Um, you know, it, it's kind of seems like a cliche thing, right? All is one. And I've always really wanted to grasp it. 
from like inside the mind of a, a extraterrestrial like well how did how did they see that right because i can see it in my head but i i feel like my perception is pretty pretty puny in comparison of uh what i'm aware of and what they're aware of so um yeah as a surfer i'm always really interested in water analogies and i seem to have just like I feel like with my technology and certain things, I'm sort of led sometimes in a way to discover something. Uh, recently, I was I was watching something and it, it got me looking at um, the Hindu religion and talking about all is one. And uh, there was this quote that I, I heard saying that individual consciousness and divine consciousness is an illusion in between, sort of like the waves are a part of the ocean. And, uh, you know, not separate. So a lot of those kind of like really kind of very um, quantum entanglement uh, th messages. You know, everything seems to be sort of a quantum entanglement message. It's never like, hey, go get some sugar or <laughs> something really simple. It's sort of like these like weird kind of deep, profound uh, detective moments where you, you sort of feel like, wow, is someone kind of like looking at what I'm looking at and uh, kind of trying to connect the dots and have those markers, you know, try to try to like realize that there's actually markers to it. There's there's like some kind of like synchronicity and serendipity all sort of wrapped into this neat little package. And um I feel like sometimes I, I, I look so much for new stuff to, to understand my experience that when I, I learn something new after 18 years of uh, researching my experience, it's like I've just been waiting to get there. Yeah. Yeah, well, for me, it's been... <laughs> uh, well, I'm 72 now, and I became aware of it around three and really aware of it about six, but not aware that I that I, that I was entangled with them. So, you know, after communion came out, I don't know why I must've been stupid or they needed a house to fall on me, but you know, after all this time, I know exactly what you're saying. So. Yeah. Um, I think there's a lot of experiencers that maybe seem to have a, a similar feel where they feel like they're being kind of fed information. Oh yes. And I think when you're, starting to open up to this kind of stuff and starting to realize just how we're all really entangled through consciousness. Um, it's, it's interesting how you can kind of just keep finding more and more information and that it's just never ending. You're always going to learn something new and um, just how strange and interesting existence is. Um yeah, I, I definitely think, too, that uh, with the ET messaging, there's a lot of people out there that have, you know, talking about the earth and, and feeling like things are going wrong. I, I know that um, I try not to let it get too negative. I, I think I've gone really negative just in my personal life with talking with my friends about it. And I, I just don't want to be negative, negative, James. I would like to try and find like a, a good harmony. Sure. In those like kind of apocalyptic things that i mean once you make the jump to believing in there is this group of you know people out there that are trying to communicate with us and they have this higher technology it's kind of like a weird weird game of being in this society knowing that that exists but everybody pretending that it doesn't yeah so i don't want to be frustrated with everybody because they're not running around with ET technology or something, but it is, it is really interesting just where we are culturally and that I'm actually able to come out and talk about, you know, extraterrestrials messaging me. And uh, I know I'm not the only one that gets that. No. And then I find it fascinating that other people that have been visited seem to have this profile, um, uh, childhood trauma, certain bloodlines, and then a certain personality. And so we're all like kind of kind of really receptive also to being messaged. Because I think most people that come in contact are usually pretty sensitive. I know. 
yeah, it's sort of that that sensitivity thing. Uh, I was talking on a, on another podcast with um, Dev and Earl Gray uh, the other day, and we sort of talking about how, like, growing up, I feel like I've always been trying to talk to God, and uh, you know, as a very young person, being really spiritually aware and going to church at like nine years old by myself, and uh, I've always you know, try to listen to that and all of the near death experiences that I, I've had, um, the way that I got out of it was listening to that voice. So I know, I know whatever it is works and I don't doubt it for a second that, you know, it could be my intuition or things outside of it, but we all, we all have that, that gut feeling, but that the ET messaging goes like a little further and it, it, um, I think it's really important. I think a lot of experiencers are all receiving all exactly the same messages at the same time as Pretty well. Much. I know it, that um, common theme. It, they're short and to the point. And then I was ta uh, talking to an experiencer the other day named Indy, and she showed a piece of art, and it was a giant uh, picture of the earth, and it had all of these lines connected to these lights. And she was explaining how each one of these lights was like an aware consciousness and that they were able to like see all of the people down there on this geometric grid, sort of like Google Maps, but like Google Souls or something. And they're able to like just like zoom in. And then each one was like connected to another one. And she said in her drawing that she didn't draw as many lights as she saw in her vision. But to me, that felt like a, a really profound moment where, you know, they're, they're, they're in it. That art lies the answer to some kind of bigger clue, I feel like. Because the experiencers know more than some people higher in the government because sometimes these Ooh, things yeah. happen and they just fly off and you know what I mean? You can't pay for this thing yeah. to happen. And the shadow government is very, very concerned about this and they always have been because, you know, these are the guys that are, uh, that are scamming all of us, lying to all of us and hoarding knowledge and hoarding power and money and they're destroying the planet and their worst fear, I think, is what are we up to? Why are why are these beings interacting with us in a communion sense? Um, because they don't know what we might be capable of. And at the same time, I think they're worried about screwing with us too much because we're, you know, we could be property in a sense that they shouldn't mess with or else. Yeah, there's there's a lot of really interesting theories on exactly what's going on. I, I've been a huge fan of Carla Turner and sort of her um, kind of livestock interloping farmer uh, theory, um, sort of paraphrasing there. But, you know, sort of the idea that this is some sort of like farm. For me, I, I sort of looked at Angus beef and like the history of Angus beef and how, you know, someone from Scotland brought, you know, some cows over and uh tried to you know it did interbreed them with the cows in the in the plains yep. and um you know and now you know in the i think it was like in the late it was like 1873 uh meat market when he showed up for the first time uh his cows were freaks like nobody had ever seen that much meat on a cow uh and i don't i'm not trying to like instigate eating cows here or anything but just talking about um you know the fact that we have such a like homogenized group of people here on the planet right now. And, um, you know, just, just also like the theories of, of, uh, you know, of, of understanding, you know, what the bloodlines are and why so many ETs are coming to America and, and why they come to the people they do. And, you know, what are their DNA lines and what are their, you know, childhood trauma yeah. lines? And how do all these things like sort of interrelate and connect? Um, yeah, it's it's pretty it's pretty complicated uh, when you start thinking about just how many different ways of thinking about this there are. Um, it starts to almost be uh, endless, really. Sure, James. Um, can I can I ask you a question? Yeah, I didn't mean to interrupt, but you love animals. You like you love dogs, right? Oh yeah. 
and I'm sure you you take your dog sometimes as I often do every day and you put your forehead right against their head right and you and you yeah. and you hold them and you get this feeling from them this purity this this love this it just flushes you out and you just it makes you feel so good have you ever considered that the visitors that are interacting with us are doing a similar thing you know i've i've thought about that and i i've i've kind of like come to the conclusion that um you know there's that song i forget we'll make great pets um but i i, I think don't that we're pets I, I i well no but like i mean that they're lacking in something and as we are and that's i mean i consider my dog oh. an equal partner in love in, in Oh, okay. So you, like they, like we can make them sort of like emotionally stable or kind of, kind of like some sort of balance there. Yeah. Um, it's something that, that could be possible. I mean, I think for a long time for me, I really like was on uh, the hunt to understand cloning and, and genetics and, and, you know, where we are right now with it currently and you know people that have already been cloned on the planet and um you know cloning of animals and and things of that nature and, and understanding the relationship of of a breeder to the animal itself similar to how we were talking about angus beef right um, with uh the best breed programs from what i understand uh do not follow a plan uh they free flow and they work with whatever challenges there are and, and they try not to do the same thing every year. Uh, the really successful ones. Um, I, I think that there might be a disconnect there between us and them, because I, I do think that there is sort of a pure form of ET that, that could have that connection. But then I think that if there are the half breeds, that they would be like an even bigger bridge to that connection because they would have a little bit of both. So it'd be like a half dog, half person that you're like connecting with versus just like only dog. Um, I, I, yeah, I, I, I try to like understand the feeling part and I want to understand the love, but mm -hmm. I don't, I'm really, I'm really interested in the science and I, I really want to sure understand, understand that love. Right. And, and yeah. what, what, that and how do we how do we equate that to this particular phenomenon i mean with carla turner she says that they lie to us sometimes and you know they're able to manipulate us and say oh you're spiritual and then that is you know makes it easier for people to be manipulated but i don't think it's good to go down that road completely and start uh, you know annihilating any information and saying that there are really good things happening and and that you know they do tell us the truth and that we are here to sort of learn from them because um, yeah. it's been a long time i hope we do because um you know we're in a lot of trouble down here and it just keeps getting worse and it's not the good people of earth that are doing that and there's more of us than there are them but would you want the job of running the planet and amassing so much wealth and secrets containing all that no no good person in their right mind wants to do that and that's the problem so the balance is way the hell out and it's going to yeah. be corrected and it might be us that are going to correct it somehow and that's maybe what they fear i don't know it it's yeah, my yeah. gut it's speaking to me it's saying it's something like that i mean i i i like to to sort of play devil's advocate even on myself yeah, and trust. what would it look like if it just went to hell in a handbasket and just continue to and mm -hmm. i want to like stay positive though and i don't like yes. to get mindset but i'm also like totally willing to go down that road just just to see mentally what i need to be prepared for um because we've already as a society kind of like taken on a lot especially with the last pandemic and i mean there's other there's other stuff out there right now like there's a bird flu right now that has 50 percent mortality rate that they're not stocking up uh you know um vaccinations for and the cdc is going to monitor it but monitoring is another word for doing nothing and then it spreads everywhere and you know the money that it costs to prevent 
a thing like that to make vaccinations is tiny in comparison to if that transfers over from birds to people. So, I mean, just a well, lot, that's how just, it works. There's just a lot of mismanagement on the human world. I mean, oh, like, sure. on like so many like fundamental levels from like when you get here to even when you die and um, the people that are at power now are no different than the people that were at power, you know, 10,000 years ago or That's whatever. Correct. That's absolutely correct. And so we're really just continuing to fail to learn history and repeating it constantly. Uh, but no, you can't take the high road. It, uh, we all have something to learn here. I, I guess the best thing for me is to just stay really open minded and, and just continue to tell myself I don't know the answers. Um, if I think I do, I need to like calm myself down and realize, you know, there's always going to be more information that's going to come forward. And, uh, you know, I love listening to people like Dr. Nolan, um, talk about this stuff and talk about, you know, people with, uh, high experience coming to him and examining their brains and, you know, looking at the particular part of their brain that seems to all be matching up in, uh, in the ganglia part. Uh, where there's like extra sensories and, you know, that kind of stuff is just so fascinating because he has access to Stanford uh, and the medical facilities. And so he can just, you know, do that kind of stuff. And I think over time we're going to, we're going to learn that, you know, yeah, there might be people that are watching us on our galactic doorstep uh, as I've heard other experiencers say that are, you know, trying to whisper down to us because I don't, I don't think that it would do any good for them to do a mass landing. Um, I don't think that that would, that would change anything. Um, I don't, I don't think that anybody would really understand what the consequences of that are. Um, I think the only way for them to really affect us in an incredibly efficient way is to sort of do it the way that they are and to connect with people that are aware have them work on themselves and then find other people to tell them to work on themselves and sort of this slow. Cause I, I don't think they're as worried about things as we are in time scales. I mean, for me though, like I've been getting the message for a long time that like, if we don't do something in the next couple of years, we're going to kind of reach a tipping point and things are just going to continue to get, you know, more and more terrible. Yeah. And that if they really wanted to do like a mass show up, this would be like a great time, um, you know, right before World War Three or whatever, before the U.S. and China getting into it, that becomes the world. Only if we go that far. Yeah. And so um, do, you, do you know what tomorrow night show is the name of tomorrow night show? We're up to episode 11. It's oh, called. Okay. Yeah. We will emerge from within you. That's the title of the show. And that's what you're talking about. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. And, <laughs> we and, haven't um, talked about this before, have we? No, no. Nope. They get, I think natural uh, knowledge path to, to kind of getting to the point of um, just be aware of, of everything that's going on and, and listen to a lot of other experiencers and what they have to say. Um, because as one experiencer who's seen something, I know that when I've met other people that have told me things and, and kind of like uh, had heart to hearts and, and shared their UFO experiences, it's, it's helped me to just realize how big this phenomenon is. It's huge. There's but like, it's scaring, it's scaring the hell out of the shadow people here, the shadow government, the, the ones controlling all the power. They are scared to death. Yeah. Not, I mean, are you, I don't think you are. I'm not. I mean, it's like that day you went in front of camera, uh, you were asked if you were afraid, and you said, no. <laughs> it was just a great answer, James. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm not I'm not afraid of what the, our government is doing. I mean, our government's going to do whatever it needs to do to, you know, um, exist and continue yeah. to do what, whatever it's doing. And uh I think when, when we're able to like finally put down our arms and, and start, you know, sharing and caring, which sounds really, really lame, but you know, that's, that's the kindergarten message that we need to teach our children. We need to teach adults is that we're just, I, I'm not saying that we need to like, you know, 
give up our day jobs and, and, and stop everything the way that it is. But there, there is a moment where we all need to like really unite and, and sort of understand that we're all really in this big problem together and everybody's kids in the future is going to have to be dealing with this. And, you know, yeah. the, the fear of ET contact is really important because if our kids have to deal with that and we're not going to talk about it and we're not going to write it down, how are they supposed to know what to do? You know what I mean? How are they supposed to know uh, when they see a light that dad saw that, right? When then grandpa saw that too. And uh, how important it is to connect with the universe. You know, for me, um, surfing is something that I find so uh, sacred. And uh, last, I, I forget, it was uh, 420 a couple years ago. Uh, I have a video that I think I sent you guys. Um, I actually saw a UFO at Rincon Point. Uh, while uh, I was getting out of the water after surfing and connected with it. And so, I mean, these, these things not only can hear your thoughts, but they can like show up where you are, where you do stuff and like, you know, come check you out. Mm -hmm. And, and that's like, that's really important for us to, to be doing those things where we're in the right place at the right time. And we're, we're, we're pursuing our passions. And so. Um, we need to take our kids out and our grandchildren out. We need to show yeah. them the stars. They need to see the stars. They need to look up and they need to know the connection they have with them. Do you know how many kids today never get that? Even even people that we know now that are in your age and stuff don't really think about it. They never really thought about it. So if you take them and show them in the very, very dark at night in some place where there's not a lot of light pollution and they see the amount of stars there are in the Milky Way, it's overwhelming to them sometimes. I've been witnesses of this over and over again. They're completely, uh, they're not prepared for, for the immersement that they have in this, this amazing grand thing called the universe. Cause it's all, it's all 2d. Yeah. I mean, just, just the oceans alone on this planet, there are more waves than you could ever surf. You know, there's just, there's so much coastline and there's so many beautiful tropical waves. And, and just to me, I hope that, you know, ETs do surf. Seems like <laughs> probably do <laughs> somewhere. Yeah. I mean, it, it's Water such a great, great activity, and you know, you could do it for such a long time. And yeah, there's there's water everywhere. Um, yeah, I I uh, I really hope that that you know other people out there that have had these experiences can start coming out and talking about it, and and we can get our our society to a point to where. I mean, honestly, if there are ETs out there and they have this technology, I mean, I think it is a really good question to be asking why they haven't come down and shared this technology and why why they're messaging people like me, who's a civilian, like ordinary person. But, ten, okay. you know, I have family in the military, mm -hmm. uh, Cherokee bloodline, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? All these like interesting uh, markers that connect me. But, you know, why why haven't they come down with med beds and healed everybody? Why haven't they come down and uh, taken away the nuclear weapons and uh, given us better iPhones? <laughs> you know, yeah. like, why why are we walking around uh, continuing to, to be at this low level consciousness and they're not coming down to communicate uh, except through telepathy to like certain people? which almost gives them like, you know, plausible deniability in a lot of ways too. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's, it's, it's really, it's really fascinating uh, to think that the government knows about this. They've been studying this for a long time. And not only that, but they, they follow people who've had experiences and try to chase down anything that comes near them, you know, cause that's, that's been documented before. So my neighbors really? are getting very noisy. Oh no, they, it's okay. No, they no. Our neighbors seem to know we're doing this, and it's. Uh, um, it's but just, yeah, I, I think that we uh, we need to listen to those messages that are coming from the ETs to mm -hmm. that are experiencers, and and realize how important and valuable that is, and then also I think we should be skeptical of them. And we should we should question them and we should challenge them and, and not just take everything at face value either. Well, and, we should uh, always ask questions, better questions and use critical thinking. 
You know, Absolutely. I mean, you, you, you asked why they didn't share technology with us. Well, I know that our own people have more than once come up with technology that would, would have meant that we would never need the power companies. We would not need gas engines or airplanes. We would have had any grab and limited power from a very little power input. We have enormous power output. And you know what I'm talking about. I'm talking about zero point energy, which every scientist and every government official on the face of this planet has done their best to say is BS. And yet they've continually killed person after person after person who has developed this technology, which is the very root technology that the visitors use evidently to power their technology and craft. In other words, our own people have discovered something that's natural and you can tap into power for just like water and all the other natural forces in the universe and yet because that is such a threat to greed and money and wealth and power it's documented how many times that, that these devices have been made by our own people scientists have looked at them and said my god they really work and the next thing you know they're dead they're poisoned or they had a brain aneurysm or they had a heart attack or they get shot or they get hit by a car and it goes on and on and on. Sure. And tonight, you know, AJ on the Y files, the show he's running tonight at six o'clock, I get, Mary and I got to see a preview of it last night is all about this. And it just, you watch it and you try not to get mad. It's just terrible what our own people have done. They prevented us from having a, a close to a utopian world. Well, I mean, it's it's definitely you know there is inventor syndrome you know and dr stephen greer talks about that where you know yeah he does get really excited and then they don't you know free source uh the information uh you know and, and you can see that with uh with vaccinations that happened where they needed it and they weren't going to allow that out because of patents and whatnot it's um, the patents. and so the patent we yeah we're by and we're patenting, um, you know, seeds and, you know, eventually human beings. And so we're, we're getting to the point where, uh, you know, at, at, at some point our technology is going to, uh, you know, be our overlords. Right. And, and have, I mean, it's already pretty much that way. Right. If you don't have your iPhone and you're, and you're doing your work through your iPhone, you know, you're pretty much, your life is over until you yeah, get your right, iPhone. Right. They call it, he calls it the death patents. That's the name of the episode tonight on the Wi Fi, the death patents, volume one. And it, That's and he backs everything up with facts. And, you know, he even, he even says, you haven't seen proof of zero point energy actually working. And then he shows it to you. It's amazing. And I recommend that everybody watch it if they can. And it, it'll be there, you know, once it runs tonight for his premiere. But, um, but AJ is amazing. So, yeah, we got a, a heck of a battle to fight. Yeah, I, I think that there's no easy way out. There's, no. there's going to be, I mean, I, I think that the, the real problem is, is that we're not, um, we're, we're really looking at our educational system and we're not taking the time to like train people to do those things. I think there's a lot more money in, in making bad technology and things that don't work. And there yeah. is a really There's, good technology yeah. that does know. that. Does, you know, no, and, and, opening the door. Sorry. Oh, it's okay. But like, you know, there's there's so many jobs involved with with uh, you know the petrochemical industry and and so like oh. it's yeah, they're not going to go. It's not. It's a complicated issue. Uh, looks like someone's trying to come in and hang She's out. She's nervous. It's it's Nova. She's nervous because her neighbors are stomping and banging and crashing and making noises, and my dog doesn't well, like it. Nova. And so she thinks I can save her. So that's good. There she goes again. <laughs> oh, that's fine. Oh, that's you gotta love them. Um, yeah, yeah. So you know. The real issue is the problem we have with a with a small percentage of human beings that are ruining everything. And the gut feeling I'm getting, the sense I'm getting from the visitors is that they're trying to help us deal with that. 
Yeah, that's that's a pretty tough one. I mean, you would think that they would be coming to the Jeff Bezos and Mark Zuckerbergs, and we would be hearing about them having UFO encounters. And oh, they want know, to shoot them down and see if they're friendly. Yeah, and that's that's another kind of strange mistake is to see an airplane and just shoot it down and and already kind of include that it's evil because you know it's an airplane. Right. Um, yeah, you just want to make sure you had good intentions. Sorry about the wreckage. I don't think it's a good idea to fire upon them because, you know, you're sort of who knows what kind of intergalactic politics you're entering into. And and then also, you know, when you have that kind of technology, like what are the what are the threats to everybody else on the planet when you have a bomb that, you know, because they, they, those things are basically bombs and they they can explode. And when they do, they're huge and yeah. they know that there's. So much going on with, you know, investing in that technology. I've heard the word UFO as an acronym, acronym of unfunded uh, opportunities. So, like, I mean, this this stuff could be used for really great stuff. It could be used for really bad stuff. Sure. I mean, pot I p potentially looking at human behavior, it's going to be used for really bad stuff. But mm -hmm. I, I think that once we as a society, you know, get ourselves to a point of, I don't know what kind of Armageddon or what kind of world it has to look like. But when we start like, you know, having to like deal with these people that are in power, that are constantly making bad decisions, you know, doing all this stuff. I mean, look at Congress. They're just, you know, fighting again to get a new speaker of the house and they're not doing the, the people's business and they're continuing not to do the people's business. Sure. You know, we senators, they're not doing the people's business. And you have the president, he's not doing the people's business, you know, and you have another, you'll have another president come in there and he won't do the people's business either because we were never supposed to have a king in the first place. And, and the whole, the whole system of voting is great. But Mark Twain said that, you know, if voting mattered, they wouldn't let us do it now. <laughs> now, and I, I do think voting matters and I don't want anyone to get a negative viewpoint, sure. but I, I do, I do think that there is a duping going on and it re this all relates to the 1%, uh, you know, 500 families in America, uh, you know, supplement 50% of the funds that go into campaigns now. And so like you have money, you can be whatever you want. You want to be a Senator Well, all those people were rich to start with. And so like, and then they, they, you know, have all of the extra time to then, you know, make friends and, and influences, you know, they say criminals when they, they go to jail, it's like going to criminal school. Well, when you take a politician and they go up to the Hill, what does that do to them? And like all of these lobbyists and influences and, you know, we can't even get gun violence out of preschools. And, and we're like talking about extraterrestrials helping us. I mean, I feel like both are on the same spectrum dream for hope because we're, we're both living on a, on a precipice of like an in, insanity. You know what yeah. I mean? It really, it's just a, it's we have just to help ourselves. We do. What's that? We have to help ourselves. I mean, the, what we need to do is how do we get, there's, we know there's more good people. People just want to get up every day, leave, live their lives, love their families, put food on the table. How do we get a lot of these people who are so disconnected from, from reality? And they are disconnected for reality. They would say, who are you to tell me that? You think you've been abducted by aliens. Well, I'll tell you how. When's the last time you looked at the stars? When's the last time you walked in the forest? When's the last time you looked at an insect up close and, and tried to share a communication with it? When's the last time you connected with nature? When's the last time you realized that you are an animal? You are a part of all of this. Because sooner more people do this, the quicker those few percentage of bad people are going to lose their power. They're not going to listen to them anymore. And they're going to connect with a greater power, the power of what they've always been connected to and been cut off from. Somebody's trying to help us realize that we're not cut off. We just have to plug that connection back in. And I think you doing that, absolutely. I mean, shoot, you go out and sit on the waves. How much more in connection can you be with nature than sitting out in the ocean with all that's swimming around underneath you and flying above you and the stars when you're out there at night, although it's 
you know, wonder about sharks, but you know, that's just me. <laughs> but I mean, it, you're connected, you're barefoot in the sand. And so yeah. of course you're aware of these things. And so how do we get, you know, what's less than 8 billion people now, but how do we get 7 billion people to connect with this? Because that will start a beginning that will bring around a wonderful end. Um, you know, I really, I really think it has to do with our connection to food. And, and how how we we get our food and and how we uh, are connected to it you know most Americans today right we go to the grocery store and if that wasn't there what would you do uh, in the 1850s every single American plant. right well every every single American in the 1850s had a cow and I'm a big fan of J uh, Jamie Oliver and uh, He's got this great cookbook, um, you know, talking about victory gardens in England and how during that time, uh, how important it was to plant a victory garden sure. and how that was the war effort. They're a nation of gardeners. Yeah. And, and we've we've lost touch with that. And we've 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 given uh, all of our time away to, to people who do that industry who, you know, we don't, we don't have a connection to them and, and all the people that pick your food and, and how hard that work is. And yeah, you know, we see it every day when we, we drive to the studio because we drive through, it's just, we're surrounded by farmland here and we see, and we thank those yeah. people every day. It's backbreaking and it's technical labor. And most people that have never spent a day out there probably not even last and and so um we we really don't have a connection to them either we should know their names and we should be super thankful we should be able to like connect with them but uh so, sort of this uh divide and conquer system on the planet we we've made it so that it's it's really not uh affordable for you to do that uh you don't have time you don't have a place to do it you can't even find a place to rent i mean it's just like it's a, it's a rat race on purpose so that we don't connect with each other on a deeper level. And who and, made it that way? Well, we could we could point to a lot of a lot of different things, but I don't think that that solves the issue. I think that the issue is is that we have uh you know we have the baby boomer generation right now that's an older generation that that lived in a wow, society what's shame, huh? <laughs> <laughs> that that lived in a society where you know fifty. <laughs> Years ago, uh, you know, school cost so much, right? And, and, and land cost so much. And now we look at the now and, and they're astronomical. And so, uh, you know, people in my generation, you know, don't, there's a wealth gap there and there's a huge wealth gap. And then as soon as the baby boomers pass away, uh, that will be the biggest generational transfer of wealth in human history. And so with that all gone, you know, there's a lot of tax loops that are going to happen so that that money doesn't get taxed and doesn't go into the system you talk about like taxes and you, and you talk about fixing the world and you talk about food systems like we have to talk about where money goes and how it's allocated we've got, yeah. we got to be like people are like let's tax the rich but then they never say yeah but where's the money going to go to and how is every single penny going to be spent and is this just going to be another you know shakedown and so like just you know trust but verify and um yeah we're so far away from our food sources that they're able to control us with our iphones and so when your bank account has zero in it that means that you have no food yeah. and so we've gotten ourselves so far away from the natural world that our technology is not spiritual anymore it's 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 the opposite it's yeah. it's deep yeah absolutely and, and it's you know causing like people you know to to do things that they wouldn't normally do in society right and so um I, I guess for me i i don't really know sometimes what to do i just no, like to make none of us do I'm, I'm like you steve i i like to make ufo art and and just kind of like hang out and and just channel that energy into it and share it with people and just sort of hope that i can change the world from the inside out yeah, and, and, and share share that with them. Right. Well, you know, it, it 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 the beings we're dealing with, and there's there's a great deal of them here on the planet, and I don't think we're all dealing with the same ones, but a lot of us are. 
their culture is probably entirely different. They probably don't even have an economic system. Yeah, so that's from their perspective. You know, this is very difficult to to understand why we can't rise above that and do the same thing. I mean, Roddenberry talked about it in Star Trek. In Star Trek, they do not have an economic system that everyone's taken care of. There's enough energy in the universe and food and, and wealth for everybody to be supported by it. Right, but in Star Trek, Jeff Bezos and Mark Zuckerberg do not exist. No, they it's, don't. No, they would have been laid to rest, buried in, in a pile of sand a long time ago because... Well, I'm not saying that, but I'm just, I'm just saying that, like, you know, as far as, like... Uh, First off, right, there's so many different kinds of, of alien species out there. It's like we're talking about fish in the ocean. So, I mean, they must yeah. have had to come up for a cooperation to create that kind of tech to get here in the first place. Sure. And, and so, yeah, if they get crash landed on Earth and they don't have any money when they go into 7-Eleven for a Slurpee, I mean, yeah, that's really <laughs> sad, right? You know, but they might, you know, so like, but at the same time, uh, you can't eat money and, nope. and and that's where economy is going is driving everything through the the you know endless torture uh cycle of, of death and torture through our food system and and we're all just completely disconnected not realizing that if anything happens to that system even at the smallest level we're all kind of out out to lunch and we've we got to deal with it on our own so um, well, some of us know how to survive. Some of us know how to to yeah, yeah, and, yeah. and get plants and stuff. And you know, mostly the indigenous people of, of this world and in this country will be the survivors. And they were here first in, in the first place. And the reason that they're here in the first place is because they they took care of the land. They didn't own it. They were one with the land and one with nature and part of it. And they communicated with the spirits and their departed spirits, loved ones, and the star people. And if you talk to the indigenous people, and I hope that you have, you will learn this. And it's not just here in the United States. It's Canada, South America, uh, the Aborigine people, in everywhere. And then something happened. And they were all on the right path. Well, I mean, they're, they're still here, and their ancestors are here. It's the new, sure. it's the new of, of the Native American community. And, and they're totally attuned and knew what was going on and still are. And, and to this day, they have to live sort of in this Western world with the rest of us. Yeah, um, they do. I, and they're I, trying I, to help us. But, but, but there is hope and, and things can get yeah. better. And, and, yes. the more that we, and the more that we talk about, you know, potential civilizations out there that don't have money systems and start talking about how we can have something that's not a dictatorship in total mm -hmm. uh, unity. Uh, but still values individualism, uh, but yet doesn't, you know, allow an individual to then uh, be the only one that benefits. So like there, yeah, it, I, it's about balance and, and, and learning it's about that. Balance. And, yeah. And this it, place it, is off balance. What does the universe do when things get out of balance? Nature, the universe, what does it do? Well, it follows through. Yeah, uh, it does. It Checks and balances. Because everything they, is away. Yeah. Everything goes in circles. So we're, we're a part of that wave and we're a part of that community. Yeah. You, you've got about 10 minutes left here in your hour. Um, I wanted to talk uh, and ask you what's been going on lately. I mean, have you had um, uh, not necessarily experiences, but more involvement with, with this? Because I, I have, and I know others have too. It's, it never seems to stop. It might get quiet for a while, but are things if things happen that, that you'd want to share with all the people here who really love yeah. you and it's have funny to say you bring that up actually um so yeah with my son and with my daughter and my three dogs and my my surf school and my swim coaching and my writing and taking care of my wife who's my number one uh forever um i i definitely don't have a lot of time but when when i when i do feel like i'm being pulled in a direction where they want me to do something um i i, I push towards it and so lately i've actually been organizing uh, a support group um called my space family with another uh ufo friend of mine 
And then she kind of came to me and it was her idea. And she was like, I really want to get people together and just make art and just have like a support group. So I have, you know, we have somewhere to just go and talk about UFOs because I don't want to have to burden my husband with it all the time. And so it was really interesting meeting her. Uh, and she has had a lot of experiences herself and she has them talking to her. And so it's interesting to have somebody who's seen UFOs, who also says that they talk to her, kind of have that dialogue between each other and sort yeah, of like, sure. almost like the same person is talking to us and sort of mm -hmm. working through. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, we, we started out with the idea and we've put together myspacefamily.com now and we have a Facebook page support group. And uh, my friend, you know, she just kept saying, we need to push it. We need to push it. We need to do it now. They're saying that we have to do it now. And so there's been a lot of these messages of just like, do it now. Don't don't yeah. wait till do it you right are now. Doing it now. James, you are doing it now. <laughs> yeah. You've and, been doing more art. I've been doing art and, and just I've never come out like this before. And and seeing this is like not necessarily like a job, but just like as a a, a really beautiful opportunity to represent yes. Yes. of extraterrestrials maybe that I, I met on the freeway and, and try to be really respectful to that, that group that's kind of gifted me with so much as well. I feel really indebted to them. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, there's a lot of like respect coming across. And, and so um, I, I know that uh, when I went to uh, your, your group actually, uh, and we met up and had a potluck uh, and met some P UFO people. Sure. Uh, I, that was actually the coolest UFO thing I've ever been to. Um, and, you know, I went to Alien Con and that was really cool. Um, a bit, a bit lonely, but, but I tried to find my tribes there and, and I definitely connected. Um, and I've been to a lot of premieres of things, but when I met um, Daphne and, and the other people that were in the room, and I, w I wish I could get to know, uh, some other folks that were there a little bit more, obviously, um, just, just that moment there was like, almost like being in a dream or something. It was like, it was like, is this real? Is this like, is this really happening? I know the and, feeling, sure. And I've had a little bit of that experience before with the Vaughn Smith and, right. and one of, uh, experiencers, Marty, who, um, yeah, if Marty's out there, I apologize for the last time we talked. I, I told Marty that Project Blue Beam, uh, wasn't real. But uh, in, in retrospect, you know, you never know about a lot of that conspiracy stuff. But um, yeah, yeah, and I'm really humble about it. And uh, I have his memoir that he hasn't published, and it's the best UFO memoir I've ever read. Mm -hmm. and, and that's what sort of led me to want to do these things was meeting him and Yvonne. And then uh, then you guys kind of came into my life uh, through a friend. And, and that whole thing was just like, just so powerful and and everyone in the room feels like they're an x-men or something and and like part of this like mutant brigade of talented people like you're, you're <laughs> yeah like, i know be pushed into one place and then everyone's just so chill like nobody seems to have an agenda of like i'm a better experiencer than you are well, no 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 of none, of the, none of this is about ego i mean there are people out there that that are but it's not us yeah that matters yeah, no it's about trying to talk about something that happened and, yeah. and be honest about it. And, yes. and the brutal is what is so beautiful about this group is that people are talking about their deepest, darkest secrets that they would never tell. And, and now they're talking to a group of people that have seen UFOs that are strangers and like having a deep, profound connection. I mean, that's, that's huge. It that, is. That, that there's something more to the phenomenon than the individual experience and it could ever understand that there's there's some kind of symbiosis going on here that I don't I don't get but but apparently we're we're a part of it and we're supposed to be doing it. Yeah. I know. Yeah. Um, of course the group that we have where you met these people really is a bonds group. We're just a satellite of it is zero. It's it's all the guidelines and everything. Uh, in fact, she was going to be at this next one, but uh, she has to be down in Long Beach, wherever the other place is, because Kim Trotman couldn't host her. So Vaughn has to go down there, which is it's a shame because uh, it would be nice to have her here. But uh, 
hopefully we'll have a good group uh, for this one coming up, which is uh, next week. So you know about it. So yeah, yeah. I mean, so far, a number of people have filed in, and uh, we're hoping that uh, I mean John um, is is planning. Uh, so far to be there as well. I know you wanted to get a chance to talk to him. You know the John I'm talking about, right? So, yeah. Yeah, I would say John one of the most like most interesting experiencers I've ever met, you know, and, yeah. and just say that his his mind works and, and how many details, you know, when I when I hear someone speak, I, I try to see it in text as an active listener and, you know, just the detail of his experiences. Yeah, were something. So pro- and I just would like to hang out with the guy. Well, and, hopefully uh, he'll be here I, next weekend. So um, well, then there's that we talk today. He wants me to do his book cover. Yeah, well, I mean, there's that whole group of people like John, right, yep. who've had experiences who we're going to find out about over the next 10 years, you know, and um, – yeah, I'm 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 excited to to read his book. I mean, I'm, I'm working on my my book UFO Surf as well, and uh, you know you it, it's hard. Cover. What's that? <laughs> you can do your own cover. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, I, I love I love the art that you do because you're able to capture those eyes and that mm-hmm. mouth, that that mm-hmm. chin, in just that perfect proportion to where you can't fake it. You know, you have you have to know you have to have seen a forehead that big to understand <laughs> why, like it's like sculpturally. You know what I mean? You you and then you your eyes are kind of round and stuff, and you've got those great. You know, everybody has a visual reaction to your art because the art that you're making is is a reaction to the universe. And so, um, yeah, I. It, I find too, yeah, with with uh, working on a, a book about UFOs and stuff like like John's doing, and do it, it gets to the point where of insanity a little bit too, where you're like, maybe I should just never share this. Like this, just you know, you you, you don't know what to share, what not to share. You're like, should I share like trauma? Should I share, you know, my just my UFO experiences and uh, sort of like not not really feeling like it's going to be as good as it should be and, and always kind of doubting yourself the whole way. But, but in the end realizing just how important it is to get this stuff out there and how people will like, you know, somebody's going to read this and it's going to be their life. And, and it's going to be a book that I, I wrote for them, even though I've never met them. So I, you know, I, I can only hope that that's what John's work's doing with his book. I'm really excited about it. I'm really excited about uh, Daphne. If she comes out with her UFO book, mm-hmm. um, all of these people are just like really instrumental for me to be around because I've been working on mine for such a long time. I needed this kind of encouragement. So it's like, it's like perfect. It's like somebody set this up for me, you know, like I couldn't, I couldn't think of a better situation ever than meeting those people and like meeting you and getting to talk about this stuff. Oh, yeah. We're blessed to have met you. And, and, you know, I really, I have Vaughn to thank for that. Um, yeah, Vaughn is so many people, but I mean, I've been I've been working with Avon since 1989, and the first support group was in 1990, and it it was exactly what you're describing. It's just this amazing thing, and it's you you sit in this room and you almost swear that when you look around the room that you actually know some of these people, and they're very familiar. So you question what that's all about too, and yeah, it's that's- it's an incredible incredible experience in of itself. You nailed it. You nailed it. Yeah. It's, it's, it's what you said is like the creepiest fact ever is that you already people that, you know, you yeah. know, I, I've met, I've been in relationships with, with people where the first thing they said to me was, is you look like somebody I should know. And, and so like, yeah, that, that exchanging of souls and it's almost like electricity in the room sometimes. Yeah. I mean, really. Um, we're almost up to our hour, and I know you got to go attend to children. But before we let you go, I wanted to give everyone here an opportunity to converse with you. Uh, I don't know if you can see the chat, but I can, and um, it's it's wheeling by on the side. Got a lot of really good people here, and um, if you want to ask James some questions, you ask me questions all the time. Ask him some questions. <laughs> so. Um, I don't see any uh, questions coming up for me to no. ask. Do you 
it takes it takes a minute what you what is that james you want to ask me one oh no 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 i'm sorry i was wondering um oh there you got one james have you had direct had direct experiences oh and also another one how has your experience changed you have I had direct experiences and how has the experience changed me? Yeah. Um, the direct experience I had was definitely on the freeway uh, where the UFO came up and was right on me. Uh, another ex direct experience was be um, about in 2006 when I woke up in a pop-up camper and I saw a gray extraterrestrial at the bottom. Um, but right. when I light on it, it would disappear. Um, I Let's did actually... That does not forget your nighttime naked potty uh, experience too. Yeah, but nothing. I never saw anything on that. That was just all. No, but you were missing for an hour. Just about forty-five minutes. Um, yeah. Uh, I did have one time where I was doing an alien headpiece, where behind me I felt like my uh, hybrid daughter was actually standing behind me. I felt like there was a a, a dwarf standing behind me. Um, and I actually never looked around because I was so scared, but it was a giant glass window. So that, that was kind of a, an interesting indirect psychic, uh, contact. Um, and then how has it changed me? Um, yeah, it's definitely yeah that came from count and, and he asked, how has, has your experience changed you? I definitely say that, um, my friends know me now as like a guy who's seen UFOs. I think like my, my friends who surf for a while would kind of like whisper that in the background to their friends. And then some people would be like, dude, people are saying like, you've seen an alien. I'm like, try not to talk to them about it. <laughs> um, but a little bit more open. And um, when I first had it, I wanted to tell everybody. Then I stopped because it felt like people didn't care. But now that people are more interested about UFOs than ever right now, I feel like I've had an opportunity to talk about it. And so it definitely has changed my my life because I've spent time actually talking about it. That if it hadn't happened to me, um, I wouldn't have spent any of that time, and I'd be doing different things. So it, you know, it definitely puts your your life in a little bit of a different trajectory. And so, um, in in my pursuit to try to understand the phenomenon, that's mm -hmm. how it's. And I'm going to ask you one. Um, any more contact with owls? Um, as of lately, uh, I have had some owls that have been right on top of my house and right next to me. And I've been trying to hoot back to them and spend I time like four o'clock <laughs> in the morning hooting back. Interesting. Cause they do, they got to give like a one, two, and then yep. you try to give two back. And it's like, it's a decent little delay in between. Um, there's been there. There's so many owls here on the property that I live at that there's different tribes because we have giant eucalyptus trees. We probably have like ten or fifteen in one, and five or six in another, and so they'll also be communicating in between each other as well. Right. So it's I know it's like, something will listen to them, isn't it? it, it when they're when they're talking back and forth because we have these huge trees near us, a whole big row of them down the, uh, across from our our house, and um, on on some nights. Especially foggy nights when it's really still, you'll hear them out there. Yeah, it's, it's, it's. I just think it's wonderful. I guess what's interesting is is that the property that I live on, um, the ETs gave me this property to live on. That me and my wife really believe it was gifted because we waited eight months on Craigslist to sort of find it, and then it was in wow. such a it's in property that was an old walnut honey orchard that hasn't been touched since 1910 wow just, just nothing here it's just trees and stuff so it's it actually there is real wild santa barbara that still exists you just yeah never... well there's lots of spirit there there's not nothing there there's spirit yeah and it's right next to a creek and so i sort of feel like looking somebody was looking down and like found this spot for us and brought me here because the the rent in santa barbara right now with you know ucsb and everyone wanting to live here there is nowhere to live so, I mean, this this is like a miracle, in my opinion. So, like, the owls are sort of related into that. It's like this this property is sort of like the, my little skinwalker ranch, if you will. <laughs> That's that, perfect the, for you. Well, the lady next door uh, died of COVID, and they still see her walk around on the property here. And um, 
so you know we do have ghosts here and uh just just a really really weird strange place so i'm really i'm, I'm stoked i got it you know it's kind of see the wooden roof over your head in the beams yeah yeah I'm seven minutes away from from teaching surf lessons and it couldn't be better geolocated and i'm i'm right next to the santa barbara airport where i've actually seen ufos there uh right. over the airport yeah today. i know right where that is now that you said airport because being an yep. aviator i know about the airport there really um, but it's UFO. perfect for your kids too because they're being raised in a natural environment with plenty of nature around them and stars over the head i know there's light pollution there but you can still see the stars much better than you can in the heart of the city and um you know and they get to hear owls and all that and that that's that's going to change them for the rest of their lives and set them on a real path not it's to make of, being a dad like you <laughs> what part of the gifts that came after so much time after contact you know and and, and like i have the per wife i have a perfect son a perfect yeah. daughter i have the perfect dogs i got all the you know i own almost 100 surfboards you know wow. vintage and and short boards long boards mid lengths you know all the stuff for my surf school um i'm just like so incredibly blessed and i do i do think that that has something to do with my contact that like being born on 711 isn't lucky enough for all this stuff to happen yeah you know so um yeah, they're 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 orchestrating a lot of this stuff, and and they know that I'm going to come through for them because you know if there's waves, I will go, and I will I will get there, you know, and and I I love uh, the pursuit. So yeah, I'm 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 really excited to see what the other gifts are and, and how how I can try to like you know make sure that I I interpret them right and do the right things. So are we going to see you next weekend? Yeah, I'm super excited to come and check you out. We are too. We are too. James, as always, it's an incredible pleasure to, to converse with you and have this friendship and interaction. It's just, it's, you know, it's just like what you described in the support group. So, and I, I remember that day for the first support group meeting when you came in, you couldn't stay long yeah, because yeah. the kids and, and, uh, you know, I don't know, when you walked in, I just said, yeah, there's something going on here. <laughs> I know I had my then I had a family emergency and then I keep having yeah. family emergencies every time I'm asked to talk. And so it's it's really interesting. It's it it, it seems to be actually a consistency. Uh maybe it maybe that time. Maybe it's just my life, but it just those days that I have something to do for UFOs is always by far the most challenging. And so I'm starting to anticipate that. But I just want to say it's an absolute honor uh, to meet you. And uh, as a fellow artist, um, and my father was an artist for a super long time. And, um, and, and so I never considered myself an artist. And, and so uh, I, you know, make UFO art and stuff. But to like see you and what you do and your masks and everything. I mean, it's like you're like the godfather of like the alien art. You know, I really just want to honor that and say, you know, how much I appreciate what you do. You're getting a lot of thanks from from uh, the people here. A lot of people are thanking you. And really appreciate you being here. Oh, thank you so much. I really appreciate this group. You know, go, coming on and doing that really changed my life. Um, not like I got like a million dollars and I won the lottery, but you know, for me, it was like this amazing uh, expression of of therapy. And and uh, I could look back after and go like, I'm James Benjamin Pike. I actually exist. You know, I'm real. A Star Trek character. It's just what a wonderful name you have. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. I, and I just want to say how much I appreciate this opportunity. And I, I feel like this is also, uh, you know, a gift from them and just following. And I just that's why I was like when I met you and everything, I was like, you know what? I'm not even going to second guess it. I'm just going to do it And right. because these guys are connected and, and they know. So I all I have to do is just follow through and do the best You're I can. Connected. All these people here too. Yeah. Well, just thank everybody uh, and and all those positive comments because yeah, it really helps my mental health and gives me the ability to to want to do more of this and and connect with people right. and, and and you're and helping them. The same. Yeah, way. This, 
this is a healing thing for all of us. And and I want to hear other people's stories and I want to see their art. And you know what I mean? That this is what this is about is me coming out, but I want to see other people's stuff. Yeah. You know, we're trying That's to get them to come forward bit by bit. They are, but uh, it's a slow process, James, and you know why. So. Yeah. It takes a lot That's of why we're breaking the silence, you know? So you have to sort of just throw everything at it and just see how it goes. Yeah, that's true. Well, I look forward to seeing you soon and, and getting deep into it, and, uh, and we'll be enjoying each other's company. So, again, thank you so much uh, oh, for being thank, James. Thank oh, you. Yeah. Absolutely. The honor, is all, the honor is all mine. Uh, uh, just you're, you're such an amazing guy, and, and you don't get enough credit for your UFO art, so I'm glad that oh. you're, you're – I think you're there. an amazing guy. So we, we <laughs> and you don't give yourself enough credit either. So the feeling's mutual. Well, thank you so much again. I really appreciate it. All right, James. And um, good night, everybody. And we'll see you tomorrow at the, uh, at the premiere. So for right. the, uh, we will emerge from within you and uh, you get to see me be really crazy. All right. Thank you. All right, thank you.